Well, thank you, everybody. And welcome. How many people are here for the first time? So, uh, at least half of people. How many people haven't been here in 10 years? <laughs> okay, well, uh, uh, welcome, everybody. We have a really good crowd. And the, the, the crowd this uh, year is really um, kind of the balance that I, we had really uh, envisioned when we first started this conference. Now, this is the 14th one, so 13, 14 years ago. And that was to have a good balance of people from, uh, from industry, from the consulting community, as well as from the assessor community. And this year we have you know, almost 15 people from the assessor com community, just about that many from consulting, and just about that many from industry. So we have a, a really a, a, a nice uh, mix of people, and uh, very much looking forward to, uh, to uh, spending the time with you all. I would like to spend a little time thanking our, uh, our sponsors. We have some uh, new faces in the uh, not so much new faces, new, new names in the, uh, as among our sponsors. Uh, Duff and Phelps uh, became a, a sponsor this year. I've always kind of felt they were a sponsor since Duff always sent so many, so many people, but now they're officially a, a sponsor. And I have to uh, uh, especially call out uh, Ruben Miranda, uh, who helped put together uh, the wireless part of the program and helped a lot of in, in making this uh, feature happen uh, with, with Duff and that, and that sponsorship. We have some uh, some printed literature uh, from uh, Duff and Phelps in the in the back, so make sure you grab that. But we didn't have quite enough for everybody, so we didn't pass it out. But but it's it's there. Um, CostQuest is returning. Uh, has been a, a long time sponsor. We uh, uh, very much uh, appreciate their participation year in and year out. Uh, we'll hear from uh, Jim Stegman, the president of uh, of CostQuest. Uh, both today and tomorrow. They were also essential in putting together the program. Uh, we have a very distinguished speaker tomorrow in, uh, it in, in, in Mignon, and uh, uh, CostQuest was instrumental in making that happen. So uh, thank you guys for, for your sponsorship. Uh, as uh, Jeff Binkley uh, indicated, uh, he, is, uh, he is now uh, the uh, president of, uh, of AVA. Uh, Assessment Evaluation Advisors. Uh, uh, so he's uh, uh, taking over a Deloitte sponsorship. Uh, we very much appreciate uh, uh, Jeff's support. Uh, Jeff has been uh, as part of this, uh, this program since the very start and has been instrumental in making a big success. So thank you, Jeff, for, uh, for stepping up and becoming a, um, a, a full sponsor. Uh, we have a special sponsor uh, this year. Uh, as well, um, they're hosting uh, the the lunch today at the Gatehouse, and that is uh, Mara's Voice. Uh, let me tell you just a little bit about that. Um, uh, Mara's Voice is an honor and recognition of uh, Mara Binkley. Uh, Mara was a, uh, a intelligent, beautiful young woman, uh, and uh, her life ended tragically in Tallahassee in no November. Uh, Jeff put together a foundation uh, to uh, his, her, her dad to uh, address violence and uh, hate in our society, uh, including the uh, Mora uh, Voice Research Fund at Florida State. Uh, we'll have some more information about uh, how you can uh, help if you want more information uh, a little bit later in the in the program. So uh, to look for that or ask Helen, Mary, or Carrie if uh, you, you want to hear more. No more. Uh, only love can conquer hate. Uh, now a little bit about uh, TFI and, and the program. Uh, as I said, I'm very, very proud of the program this year. Um, you'll have to listen to me drone on about technology forecasting and the TFI forecast for a little while this morning. And then we're going to get to the, the, the uh, sort of the feature part of the program, and that is 5G. Uh, we're doing something new this year in that we're spending a really an in-depth look at one topic, so we'll spend a lot of today just looking at 5G. A lot of you have heard uh, uh, Ian Gillett uh, talk before, either here at TFI or at uh, Wichita. You know what a great speaker he is. He does a wonderful job at giving us the big picture. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to start out with him giving the big picture, and then we're going to drill down in specifics and elaborate and get in more of the details that we don't generally have time to do in a normal program where you only have you know, less than an hour to, to talk. So we're, we're very much looking forward to uh, uh, Ian uh, taking that over. Uh, and then uh, b before the break this morning, we'll, uh, second break, we'll have uh, 
uh, Bob Daniels from Phaser give us a little bit of idea about what this equipment looks like to make it a little more tangible to us. And then uh, we're going to have a, a, a really central program uh, but I should probably tell you a little bit about because the, uh, the title coloring in the 5G triangle is a little bit confusing. But basically 5G is going to deliver lots of bandwidth. It's going to deliver extremely reliable. It can deliver to both people and all sorts of things. Uh, and to pull all that off is going to be a, a big challenge. And so we're going to have ready the technology guys in. Uh, Robert Heath, professor at the University of Texas, who we, we, you've heard from before here. Uh, Bob Daniels from Phaser again, and then we'll have uh, Salam Makum from AT&T Labs give us the perspective about how all this stuff works in a little more detail. Then we had the barbecue lunch that's sponsored by Mara's Voice. And then uh, we're going to have a gee whiz after lunch. First thing is that Robert's going to come back and talk about some of the research stuff that they're doing in the labs in wireless. And I asked him to speak about two things that he's actively working on, uh, connected aerial vehicles, drones maybe, I don't know. Uh, and then the machine learning for communications. Then we have, uh, we kind of know there's a wireless part of 5G, but there's a bunch of stuff that's going to have to come in to make 5G work, like edge computing, fiber optics, so forth. And so we're going to have a, a panel with uh, Jim Stegman talking about fiber and Randy Cook from Affirm Networks talking about uh, edge net uh, uh, computing as well. Uh, it's be hosted by Ian. And then, of course, another big element of 5G is going to be spectrum. Uh, we're, we're talking about lots of different new types of spectrum for uh, 5G. So we're bringing in, uh, we brought in uh, Brian Drugomer uh, from Allnet to talk about that. Ian's going to come back and talk a little bit about the transition from 4G to 5G, what that means, uh, or even broader, 3 and 4G to 5G. Okay, then one thing we're trying to uh, bring back in this, uh, this, this year is the, uh, a, a strong um, the, the, the tax evaluation perspective and not just the technology. So how is this technology change going to impact uh, you guys' lives as either tax assessors or uh, appraisers or uh, consultants or, or people making planning in the, in the industry? So uh, Ruben has, uh, has agreed to uh, lead that with uh, Gary Wiggins and uh, Steve Yergo from AT&T and T-Mobile, respectively. And then I think we're going to have a special treat for you guys, a little bit different topic, but I think something that could be more as important as anything else to, uh, to your lives and that is a story about what's going on uh, with uh, some, some privacy issues uh, in the government and, and, and data. Uh, in this case, the uh, government's the IRS, but uh, there's also I think there's some parallels to, to tax as well. And then, of course, we're going to have the conference. And again, I think it will be uh, the gatehouse. So that'll get us through today. And then uh, tomorrow, we're going to turn our attention more toward uh, broadband and video, although I have to say all of this is tied together. So we'll be talking about broadband and video today. We'll be talking about wireless tomorrow uh, because they're, they're, they're part and parcel. Uh, but uh, the, the, the concentration will be more on broadband and video tomorrow. Uh, Augie Grant's going to come back and give us an update on what's going on in general in the industry. Uh, one of the big things going on is in, uh, like I just alluded to, is making a massive investment in the, in the wireline network while we're also making massive investments in, in, in wireless. And what are some of the economics and, and risks involved in that? So Jim, a segment from CostQuest is going to address that for us. And then at 10.15, uh, we have a, another special treat in that uh, Mignon uh, Clyburn from the, uh, uh, formerly from the um, Federal Communications Commission is going to give us a, uh, with, uh, with Jim, we're going to have a fireside chat to talk about what's going on in Washington as it, as, uh, it relates to policy. So I know everybody's looking forward to that. And then um, we're going to go back to the uh, taking a strong tax perspective, uh, valuation perspective. In this case, Jeff will Jeff Binkley will uh, lead uh, with Carl Hempe from Valentium and uh, John Reed in the discussion. And then finally, the last word will be uh, from the assessor perspective, uh, Peggy Wardlow, who uh, is pretty regularly comes to the to the conference, and I presume will be here at some point. Uh, will uh, give us a per assessor's perspective. And then we'll have a break, and then the box lunch, as we always end with. And again, uh, uh, as last year, Kerry Vanston will, uh, will give us uh, some insight and uh, with a very aptly named uh, speech, getting out of the alligator pit and moving forward. So uh, thank you, uh, everybody, for being here. Uh, as you know, we're trying to make this as, as informal and, and, uh, and conversational, uh, so don't be afraid to ask questions uh, and, uh, and stop things for, for comments. We, on the other hand, 
we are going to try to keep on schedule uh, again with a live feed. And <coughs> some people, uh, you know, if you go schedule their, their day around things starting on time, uh, we will keep to the schedule. Most of you probably are aware of uh, the, the, the website tfi-ctfg.com. This is a good one to know because we post all of the videos, we post all of the slides uh, on this website. You can go back and look at previous years of uh, things uh, as, as well. Uh, we'll get them up as soon as we can. So that's uh, tfi-ctfg.com. CTFG stands for Communications Technology Forecasting Group. This is a uh, industry-sponsored group that uh, basically support some of the TFI's uh, continuing research of the type I'll talk about in, in just a minute. Uh, currently, it's composed of uh, AT&T, Charter, Comcast, and uh, Cox Communications. Uh, in some form or another, this group has been sponsoring our uh, TFI's work for over two decades now. So uh, thank you, uh, sponsors uh, of the uh, CTSG as well. Uh, it's uh, a really big part of our, our work. I thought I'd just spend a few minutes talking about technology futures uh, and what, what we do. Uh, we've been around a long time. We were founded here in Austin in, uh, in 1978 by uh, uh, my father and Homer and Carrie's father, uh, John Vanston. Uh, he's still chairman of the board and still active with, with the firm. Um, we're hoping he'd be here today, but <laughs> apparently he didn't make it. Uh, oh, he'll be there later? Okay. Uh, well, excellent. We'll get, you get to meet our founder then. Uh, our, our fort and uh, currently our, the main thing we do and what we're known for is uh, technology forecasting. And I'll tell you a little bit about technology forecasting in a minute, but that's what we do a lot of. So uh, it's, um, it's, it's an art and a science and uh, it underlies kind of everything we do. A future looking uh, view at what's going on with technology. Uh, another thing we do a lot of is in the depreciation and evaluation field. Um, we do uh, reports that basically come up with uh, depreciation lives, uh, sometimes present good tables. Uh, we almost always do that in association with, with, with people that are specialized in that field, other consultings, consultants like the AVAs and Duffin Phelps and EYs and Valeniums and whoever else, I forgot the name, uh, of, the, uh, of the, the world. And then also the uh, uh, experts in valuation and appraisal within the uh, within the companies. The primary industry areas we work in are in high tech and communications, uh, IT. Uh, occasionally we do a little bit of energy as well. Uh, probably the, the bulk of our work is in the communications area. Uh, and we write reports. We uh, sometimes we occasionally do expert or witness testimony. Uh, we give presentations around the world as well as uh, uh, to put on this uh, conference. Occasionally we do seminars as well. So that's kind of what we do, technology forecasting, depreciation, valuation in the high-tech communications area. If you go back and look at our work, and what I'll, a lot of what I'll be talking about in, in, a, in a second with our, with our forecast has been what I call in the first wave transition. And we continue to do lots of work in that area. And then there's also what we're beginning to do more and more of is what I'll call the, the next wave transition. Uh, so I just wanted to take a, a little bit of time to talk about those two things. The first wave transitions are the things that we've been living in the last uh, 25 years or so. Uh, and that has been the transition from physical movement to telecommunications, analog to digital, low bandwidth to high bandwidth, <coughs> and wireline to wireless. And most of those things, you kind of understand what I'm talking about. But uh, probably the best example, and I know I've used it before, is uh, if I were to take a, a picture of you guys and uh, send it to my friend, or, to, or if I wanted to send it to all of you uh, immediately, back in 1990, what I would have done was I would have gotten an analog camera with a film in it. I would have taken a picture of all of you. I would have taken it down to the drugstore, uh, waited a week, got in back um, prints. I would have physically mailed all those prints to all of you, and you would have all eventually got in a reasonably good analog resolution of a photo after lots of physical transport. I have, you know, lots of physical movement, analog. Uh, we used to think about photography, 35 mil photography in high resolution. Now you look at it, it looks fuzzy. Uh, and it was definitely a wireline world. Uh, now 
we do use telecommunications as digital. It's very, very high resolution, even on a silly old ring that's part of our, our phone, and it's all mostly wireless. Uh, now, there's still wireline involved, of course, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's a, a, really a really big transition. You know, it's just revolutionized industry after industry. It's basically killed huge industries. It's made uh, copper cable obsolete in, in the communications industry. It's ru ruined Kodak. I mean, it's, this has been a big transition that, that we've lived through and a lot of our forecasting has been about. Now we're seeing another wave of transition of things that humans used to do being taken over by robots, drones. We'll have autonomous vehicles uh, at least helping us drive. Uh, and that transition has just started. Uh, similarly, we build our communication system basically on people talking. Now with the Internet of Things, a lot more of our, trans our communication systems will be based on banks communicating. We've grown up in the computer age. We've used to looking at things at the Internet, using computers all the time. To date, all that has been human programmed. We're moving now to a world where artificial intelligence is making a lot of those uh, decisions. And a lot of that is, of that computing is what we call cognitive computing, which is, will be made to more work with humans as opposed to having a, a hard interface. Similarly, we're used to screens, uh, whether it's a big screen like that or your television screen at home, the little screen on your laptop or pad or the tiny screen here. In your, on, on your smartphone, or a tiny screen on your watch. Uh, and I'm sure we'll still have those types of interfaces in the future, but with augmented and virtual reality, we'll have other ways of getting input uh, into us. Uh, and so this set of new wave transitions, uh, we don't have a lot of forecast yet, and we don't know exactly how it's going to impact the communications industry yet, but we think these will be as big and as important as the others. And, to give you an idea, when you look at all the forecasts I'll be showing you that we're living now, we're basically in that blue line, which I would call the first wave of, uh, of technology change. And that here, as we kind of get toward 2020, where that, that blue dot is, we're probably about 80% through with that. I mean, in terms of how much the analog's gone digital, how much wireline's gone wireless, et cetera. Et cetera. Uh, with the other things, transitions, the new transitions, uh, here at almost 2020, we're just getting started. But if it follows the same path that we saw in terms of how much it progresses, that means that as we get into, toward uh, the mid-2020s, we'll be getting at that steep part of the curve, and it could well be that we'll be living the next 20 years of our careers and our lives. And, and just as interesting as it has been the last 20 or so, uh, in, in lots of different ways. Again, the impact on us personally, as well as the impact on, uh, on, on, on industries, our industries, as well as industry in, in general. So uh, if you, for those of you that were at the last couple of conferences, we spent an awful lot of time on that red line on, on artificial intelligence and on uh, a virtual reality. Uh, this year, we're going to spend less emphasis on that and much more emphasis on the transitions that are still going on on the, on the old technology, and that is the next generation of wireless and, uh, and the next generation of fiber optics. And, and those applications. But I would say that that first new wave is really what's supporting this next wave. So everything we talk about is actually there are going to be things that will help make the next wave happen. Certainly everything about 5G, the, the bandwidth, the reliability, the Internet of Things, communicating with vehicles of all types are all things that will support the next wave. And of course, the next wave and people understanding that's coming is a lot of the reason why we're doing 5G, why we are going you know, to even faster and faster broadband speeds, because some of these applications are going to re require that. 